So she was the daughter of somebody very important who everyone knew. And all we know about her is when the, the whites made their first major attempt to uh, kick all of the, the sock out of what's now Moline and Rock Island, uh, they sent an, an ambassador to negotiate for them. And the ambassador was the daughter of Mathetes. And she appeared with a, an implement of women's work, a, a hoe or a digging stick, before the white general. And he thought it was an insult because she was a woman. He, he couldn't conceive that this was a serious ambassador sent by the Sox. He thought that they were making fun of him. So he threw her out. That's all we know of her. That's what Blackhawk says um, in, in the autobiography. And that, that incident ended with the Sox having to escape their homes in the middle of the night, their burial homes being desecrated, the army uh, burning everything to pieces. Um, the, the history that we're dealing with, um, you know, if you're doing if you're doing one of the history, Shakespeare's histories, or even if you're doing something like Romeo and Juliet, you can go back and investigate um, Western history and find out lots of information about the society that it's set in, the society where it was written in, um, and you can apply that to the play. And this is a little bit harder because um, it's just not as easy to find information about the culture that JC has written about. Luckily, he has done an enormous amount of research, and so we can just steal his. I don't have anything to that I can kind of riff on, and I, I don't have that like kind of shared, like especially with Shakespeare, there's this like shared cultural heritage that we have about it that we draw from, or I at least I feel like I draw from subconsciously, and I, there's there's no there's nothing else for me to compare what I'm doing to, so it it kind of has made the process. Um, just a little more complicated because the only pictures I see of this play are the ones in my head. Like one of the things I told my fighters on the first day is forget everything you know about sword. This is not like a sword fight at all. Uh, Greek literature, Greek classic plays refer so frequently to spears that we decided we needed spears, we needed actual spears, um, which I was able to rent, but it was it was my first foyer into like non-conventional weapons. Um, so it probably started, like, that's actually, it's a modification of the spear design. And even people who've done, like, quarterstaff fighting, it's different from quarterstaff as well. Um, the the Sauk tribe in this one predominantly uses a, a lance, which is like a six-foot, or more like a five-foot spear. But instead of a, a throwing spear, it's much more of a thrusting spear, um, which allows you to be at a distance from your opponent, who generally has a tomahawk and knife. So you have the distance advantage, but... If your opponent closes distance and gets under the range of your spear, you're in a lot of trouble. Because um, sometimes a, a five-foot, six-foot length of wood can be kind of ungainly. So most of the parrying and dodging happens with, with the shaft of the spear. Because any, any fighting culture, uh, given their weapons, they would use the whole of the weapon, not just the pointy end. When I finished my last novel, I, uh, which was all set in 1999 in the Quad Cities, I, uh, and there were seven interlocking stories, and I really wanted to, to cover what I thought of as the essence of the Quad Cities at the time, but I realized I didn't really have the historical access, access involved in that in any way. Um, the, my understanding of the Quad Cities didn't go backwards. It only went left and right and forwards. So I started doing research on where we came from, where this, uh, you know, why, why this place exists. And there's always been, I think, a, a peculiar amnesia or, or willed ignorance in the Midwest in particular, that of most of the places in this country, we seem to not have a history that we ever talk about or admit or, or own as our own. And I... Uh, and so I began exploring that, and, um, and I realized that we have a, a history as epic and as interesting and uh, as uh, multi-layered as any other, any other part of the country or the world, um, but I'd never seen it represented. And 
so I began at that intersection of, of Native Americans and the first early settlers, George Davenport, the first fur trader, Antoine Leclerc, uh, who's half Potawatomi and half French. But I, I, I wasn't able to tell the story without what had come before. So I went back to the War of 1812. And that helped a lot, but I still needed to go back farther. And so I went back to the late 18th century, right before the handover from the Spanish to the Americans of what later became the Upper Midwest. Yeah. Saucanuck itself, this huge settlement right in the middle of the Midwest with nothing but villages and fur trading posts all around for hundreds of miles. Saucanuck itself is as interesting as anything I've ever heard of. And it, it was right here. Uh, Saucanuck stood where Rock Island is, a, a town of at least 5,000, maybe 10,000 people. A walled town with regular streets. Uh, one of the largest settlements in all of what's now the United States at the time. Uh, a metropolis for 1780, actually. Um, which was right across the river from Milan, and not many people know about this. And then I realized I'd never seen a native story done from the viewpoint of the women. That the viewpoint of the women was tremendously interesting, because there's so many uh, misunderstandings and uh, poor interpretations of who native women were. They were the equal of the men. They, it was a separate but equal society. Women did all the farming. Women owned all of the land. Men were responsible for hunting and the defense of the community. So this play, my play, Bear Girl, is the story of a young woman, Bear Girl, and a young man, Black Hawk, and their entwined destinies. So your grandmother sounds to me A woman I would be proud to be 